Hi everybody, this is COG. I'm Kill Red 40 and today I'm here with Orange. And today we're going to talk about Streets of Rage 4. Yeah. I found out about Streets of Rage 4 because everybody was talking about how amazing this game is. And I just said, we got to check this game out. It looks really good. I also knew that Orange has a little bit of a secret and it's that he's actually not the biggest fan of the beat em up genre. The uh, secret's out, but it's just not a genre I've played a lot of. Maybe besides arcades every once in a while, but never really really dedicated to playing. And you know what? I have the same secret. I have not ever really delved into this genre before until recently, actually. And now that we've played Streets of Rage 4, what did you think? I liked it. It's actually pretty appealing, like today. Playing this game, it feels like an old style of game, something that you would play at the arcade. But they did a good job of making it feel pretty modern with a really modern soundtrack and an art style that is, is pretty crisp. I loved pretty much everything about this game. Its art style is beautiful. The colors just pop right off the screen. The animations are some of the best animations I have seen maybe since the 90s. This shit is amazing. And it looks like a comic book, the whole game, like a really well drawn comic book. And I just have to say like, it's incredibly impressive. Not only is the visual style of it, not only does that look really good, but also the music in it is just fantastic and it feels very modern. Everything feels pretty handcrafted. Just moving through the environment you do move side to side, left to right. So you will be moving out of environments pretty quickly, but each one you're in, you can tell there's a high level of detail put into each of these backdrops. Yeah, the backgrounds are beautiful. They really sell this idea of running through this kind of run down, destroyed, futuristic setting. And each one sort of starts out in a grimy area of town, but you move into these really beautiful stylized areas. I'm thinking of like Chinatown and its dojos, even the skyscraper starting in the bottom and moving to the top. It's, it's beautiful. The thing that I also really enjoyed about this game was just the different characters. I mean, they just pop off the screen. You want to play as almost all of these characters. What would you say is your favorite character in the game? Man, probably my favorite character would be Blaze. Bring it up. Spent a lot of time playing as Blaze just for her abilities, but in appearance, Floyd was probably one of my favorite characters to play. He just looked badass. Sort of reminded me of uh, Ajax from the Mortal Kombat games. Yeah, I really like liked the way that Floyd looked. Blaze, obviously I like the way she looks. Mm -hmm. I think everybody likes the way she looks. My favorite character to play as probably would actually be Axel. While I do think that Blaze is a much more balanced character, I did like to play as Axel because his hits were pretty heavy, but he still had that speed. Probably not as fast as Blaze, but still good enough. What would you say is your least favorite character? Probably Cherry. I was never inclined to pick Cherry throughout this playthrough. Like, you picked her once and watching you play her, and some of her abilities didn't really turn me on to her. Cherry, I think she could be usable in certain circumstances because she's incredibly fast. But what I did notice is that a lot of the guys took more hits when playing as her. And I don't know. Yeah, she she feels like the fourth player. Like, it's a four-player game. They're going to pick Axel, Blaze, uh, Floyd, and then you just give the controller to someone else <laughs> and let them pick Cherry. Well, it's now they have Adam. So. Now you have Adam. So hopefully you skip over Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nobody will play as Cherry, which is a shame because I think she looks really cool. Her animations are really cool. Her special fucking sucks though, like where she just darts forward. I hated that. <laughs> kind of sucks because she could be like a bard character too with the yeah. guitar and everything but she just doesn't have the stats to be there and that's probably for a good reason yeah speaking of which floyd's special is pretty amazing yeah floyd's special is, is pretty versatile if you're jumping it has a, a jump x will result in like this hulk smash kind of thing and then you've got like a scorpion type move from mortal kombat where you reach out grab the enemy and pull them back yeah and you can just throw them around the attacks are amazing with floyd even though he's not my favorite he is a little bit slow for me but I did really like that. His main special where he just shoots a giant laser, it pretty much clears the screen. And I don't think it's debatable that that is probably the most useful one in the game. Like most of these other supers, you kind of have to have the whole screen in your picture. Uh, besides Blaze, hers is actually pretty like pinpoint. 
but his is probably the best ability just due to how much of everything it hits. With all of that said, I think we can go into the first level and then after that we'll go into spoilers. First level takes place on the streets. I mean, this is fucking Streets of Rage 4. It's gonna be on the streets. That's where the violence is gonna happen, <laughs> right? Apparently so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on the streets and right off the bat, it introduces you to a lot of different types of enemies. And this is where I learned really quickly, this is not a button masher. If you try to go in this button mashing, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah, you're gonna get fucking destroyed. The way I know this is because as soon as they throw you in there, you fight like a couple thugs and sure, you can kind of button mash through that, but then they get knives and you kind of have to learn, okay, the best way to take care of these guys is to jump and do that kicking attack. And then you can take their knives and do whatever you want. There's really no blocks or counters to anything. It's all done in the form of invincibility frames. It doesn't even have to be a direct attack. Just time your invincibility frame so that you can get out of a hit. Yeah, either that or just get the fuck out of the way. Right after those knife guys, we were introduced to this character named Donovan, which right after you were just taught to jump and kick to stop the knife guys, Donovan teaches you the exact opposite thing because he has this uppercut punch that makes it so that you can't really do that. And I think that's cool how this game just keeps you on your toes almost with every different enemy. They introduce so many different types that they'll move really slowly towards you and just box you. They'll throw knives at you. They'll run at you with knives or they'll move really quickly diagonally across the screen. So you just kind of, you never get used to what you're fighting. At some point you kind of do, but you're on your toes the whole fight, the whole game even. I would say that this beginning intro is amazing. It has only one flaw in it, in my opinion, which will happen in a different part of the game, but you're kind of put into this subway at one point where it turns into like a 2D game. And personally, I just don't think the game really functions that well. No, it is a 2D game, if you want to say that from the perspective, but I do know this is common among other beat-em-ups. You're moving left, right, and up and down. So you kind of need that whole street. I know exactly what you're talking about, that scene and it does feel weird. Thankfully, they don't throw too many hard enemies at you during that, at least not in our difficulty. Just one knife guy, which you kind of have to just back off and then hit him. I just find it kind of a problem just because on that first playthrough, you're going to get hit no matter what you do. Whether they intended that or not, that sort of sets the tone for what's going to happen later. There are some times where you're just going to get hit and that's actually a problem I have with the game. There's times where you're going to get hit and you didn't even see the person. They're off screen when they've hit you. So I don't know. Shit like that's pretty annoying. It can be annoying with how punishing the game is. But right after that, we get into this boss fight and she's got this snake. I think this is a pretty good boss fight. It's a good way to start the game. I mean, she's not too different from the average guys that you're going to be fighting, but you just have to know when she's going to do the electricity move and just get out of the way and hit her. I think for a very first level, this is a great introduction. It allows you to kind of learn the game. It is a little bit different from most games because most games will just outright tell you about the functions and just kind of, this enemy does this, this enemy does that. Streets of Rage is very old school in that approach where it just lets you learn by dying and failing. I think that that's okay for the most part, but sometimes it can be frustrating. Now that we're gonna go into level two, I just wanna say spoilers, but before that, would you recommend this game? Yeah, I'd recommend this game. if you haven't even played a beat em up i'd recommend it still i'm the person that hasn't played a beat em up here or at least not very many of them so i had a really good time with it me too i really enjoy streets of rage 4 i think this might be one of the best beat em ups i've ever played i think that the mechanics here are pretty amazing it has a little bit of hidden depth that you wouldn't expect from this kind of a game and i think that if you're on the fence about this just do it try it check it out get some friends over crack open a beer you know have a fun time you're gonna like it Going into level two, we just fought a bunch of gangsters in level one and we got arrested for it actually at the end of level one and you're taken to the jail. The jail is, is a shit show. It's actually disgusting in there. For some reason, while you're there, the guards can't seem to keep the prisoners under control. And so now they're breaking out and they're fighting you. The police are fighting you at the same time and it sort of seems like they're working together. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but eh, we can kind of assume it is. There's sometimes though, when you do see the officers like hitting the bad guys. Yeah, they're kind of hitting them but sometimes they'll come out later. It's like they'd use them as fodder. You work your way through this jail. Now you can pick up items. You can pick up little crowbars or uh, pieces of pipe off the ground and start beating the prisoners, people with them. After you've moved out of this jail, you make your way to like a office room. That's where you start fighting more police officers and you start encountering some of the harder enemies in the game, specifically police officers with like a futuristic riot shield. And those are tough guys, at least on single player for me. When I first hit those guys, that was, I didn't know how to 
to counter them. I died a lot to them, actually. Yeah, I did too, and it almost got to the point where I was pretty frustrated. At least on single player. But that's when I kind of learned that in this game in particular, I don't know if other brawling games are like this, where you have to go up and down to escape from their attack and then just pop back up and hit them. I think that's what the point of these guys are, is to teach you to think like that. After figuring it out, I actually started to really appreciate that about the game and how it allows you just to fail so that you can learn again. I don't know. What did you think? Yeah, I learned that, of course, dodging, moving up and down, or at least that form of dodging but what it also showed me was just change your character like you might have started off as cherry and she's doing jack shit for you it'll change into axel or something and you'll find that these enemies you hit them harder i think floyd can knock their shield out in like four regular punches so i ended up using floyd from almost there on out and swapping between floyd and blaze but that was sort of what the game had taught me when they faced me with these harder enemies and i was able to get past them and from there you moved into the next do you think it's a positive or a negative thing that you have to change characters? I think that's a positive. It's a pretty small cast, and when you die, I think they want you to change it up. You play through the game, you can unlock like retro skins for different characters. You don't get to pick the skins you unlock, but you do unlock them, so I think they want you to experiment and sort of try out these different characters and see what their abilities are. I do think that that is a lot of fun. I like having to kind of use your brain a little bit more. Another thing too is there is another enemy, which is like these officers that just come up to you and they hit you in the stomach and what that does is it, it gives you some frames where you don't have any control of your character and I really like that because you kind of start to have to pick and choose who you're going to take out first. I think that's a lot of fun and I'm surprised by the amount of strategy in this beat em up game. For one player that's why it makes sense to change your character because you need to use these different characters in the game. Well you don't need to you could just be really good at the game but when you're playing with four two three people it doesn't matter you're using different characters to the best of their ability so if you're playing four players you might just send floyd to go and punch those other cops that have the shields while cherry and blaze take over and sort of go around super kicking everybody within range that doesn't have a shield so characters perform different roles for different things but everybody's just about usable yeah i would agree it's a lot of fun just talking to the other people that you're playing with coordinating the attack yeah coordinating okay i got this special do you want to take this health yeah that's a big thing that is something that we haven't discussed yet is that the way that they deal with health is is you have to break things and you can find chicken or other types of food and it makes it so that you can get your health and this is actually a very rigid way of doing health because it's pretty hard like if you go ahead and the screen scrolls and you didn't grab something you're not getting that health yeah anymore. despite you clearing the enemies in that room or not you can't move backwards in most cases is this a positive or a negative thing i sort of saw it as a negative picking up health or food or whatever it's not not like that is random it's not like you have a chance to just punch every box in the zone and get only hell it's set so you know that that crate to the left or whatever is going to give you chicken and that crate over there is going to give you an apple that's just the way it is and so if you have destroyed that thing and proceeded forward and punched people and then lost your hell you can't go back and get it and i found that a little frustrating just because of how difficult the game can be yeah i would actually kind of agree i think that it would have been a lot better if you could just take out all the guys and then kind Kind of backtrack so that you could get the health that you needed for your party or whatever i mean just with the way that the health bar works there's already a limit to how much health you can have so i don't really understand why they did that other than clinging on to the old way of doing things which i'm usually in favor of this time i think that they could have done it a little bit different i was okay with it at first but later on that was something that i felt like could have been different so right after this we get into the commissioner's office what did you think of this boss fight that was significantly harder than the first fight yeah. And pretty much every boss fight, give or take maybe one or two, is going to be this way. So the commissioner, he has this like hand to hand combat like skills where he will back up against the wall and then he'll like stance. And that shows you now that the bosses have stances before they attack you. If you didn't learn that from the characters, you're going to learn that on this boss. He has a stance that he takes and he charges you and it's unforgiving. He just has to slide right past you and he grabs you and hits you against that wall. And it's a significant chunk of your health. What did you think of that though? Were you okay with that? I was fine with it. 
it. It was the first time where I had to come back again, and it was pretty defeating when I cleared the level with one life left or zero lives left, and he takes you out, and he'll do it again and again. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. This game is really punishing. It will give you little glimpses of hope and just crush them in front of you and laugh in your face. And it makes you feel like it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which it kind of is. It kind of is. So I can't really blame the game for that. The commissioner, I actually thought was a pretty good fight. I liked him because he kind of reinforced that idea of moving up and down the field to dodge attacks. Same with, you know, our show guys. He reinforces that and you have to just go up and down while he's like rushing from one side of the room to the other. And then you have a little bit of time to just sit there and juggle him. And I thought that was really fun. It was really fucking hard. And I have seen people like in comment sections and stuff say that they've given up on the second level. I don't know if I can totally blame them. Yeah, I can't blame them. I mean, if you're not up for the challenge after the second level, you're not going to be up for it after the third <laughs> all the way to the 12th. You won't be down. It just gets worse from here. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, the third level takes place on a boat because we just got, I think, like punched out of the commissioner's office or something. I know that we just barely met another character that has like white hair. We don't know anything about him yet. Honestly, the story in this is just kind of laughable. It's like a comic book. It is like a comic book. They introduce these random characters and they're all kind of bad guys and you're just a group of good guys and it goes all over the place. It doesn't really have like any meaning. No, it just serves its purpose to kind of get these different encounters to happen. And I'm fine with that, with this kind of a game, it works. But so anyways, we're on this boat now in the middle of nowhere. What did you think of this setting? Uh, this is where I noticed the art style probably the most. And what it was was how like the environment that you were in felt like it was rain soaked and bogged down and kind of like a rainy New York dock type setting. And it just, it felt really good. And the lighting in this game, like it's all kind of baked in and, and painted in. But but it feels so good and it looks great. That was what really blew me away with this level. I think they did a really good job at making grit look gritty. That's crazy that you said that because I actually found this to be one of the more boring levels when it came to the way it looked. Now I can totally understand the animations when it's raining. It, it does look really cool and everything's like slick and wet and it looks pretty cool. But I think that this might be one of my personal least favorite levels in the game. But before we get into that, they introduce a couple new enemies. One of them being this like big fat guy that rolls around and spits fire out. I actually like this enemy kind of a lot just because he's fun to beat up. I don't know what it is about him. I think it's just this big enemy, right? Yeah, punching bag. <laughs> yeah, it's a big punching bag. And there are times when you don't want to hit him, specifically when he has his fire out. I mean, he was just a tough enemy to start out with. He's a lot like the knife characters where they'll just charge at you when he's got the fire, you can't counter it. I think you can maybe jump and give yourself the invincibility frame. But he is one of the first enemy types that really changes up what he can do. And he's big guy, like fat. And so he's a lot to punch at. I think it might be the second time you see him in this particular level is that he has this barrel behind him that explodes. And I like coaxing him towards that barrel because it will blow up and explode on him. And it's just really funny yeah. to see him do that. It's like a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, exactly. Another enemy that I did like a lot, there's these enemies that kind of jump up and they do this kicking attack. They're fun. I mean, you just get the fuck out of the way with them or hit them before they attack you. Now, this is where I started to notice that those kind of like 2D sections where you can't go up and down became a real issue because there's this one section if you want to talk about it. It's the tight corridors that you're sort of walking through along the ship sort of like the side of a ship, right? And it's very narrow. You can't really move throughout that environment too well, at least not up until you get to the boss room. It's just kind of difficult, specifically with knife characters when they're kind of rushing towards you. And I didn't really enjoy that part. I struggled through it just like a lot of the other times. <laughs> <laughs> Is that kind of like <laughs> your official statement on the whole game? Is <laughs> I struggled through I it? I struggled through it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a struggle. I mean, there's no secret. You're going to see it. We died. Yeah, we died <laughs> And came a lot. back with more health. How'd that happen? Yeah, which, <laughs> if you haven't played the game yet, what ends up happening is you die, and then they give you the option of having more life or not. It's like a bitch meter. <laughs> <laughs> which, I think that we got maximum bitch. What did you think of that difficulty? The way that they handled that? I thought it was pretty fair to let you come back after you've got your ass kicked and say, now how do you think that went? Yeah. <laughs> 
because there were some levels where it was like we accidentally didn't give ourselves any any handicap and we did it i feel like the game is just saying look you can do it it's not impossible so give it another shot and it divides your score depending on how big of a bids you are so for us it divided it by 10 or 5 sometimes but you can divide it by 2 or you know take your losses and go at it it's the bitch toll yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i mean i actually really like the way that they handle the difficulty in this game because it is really hard and you can do that if you want but it never does it for you unlike some modern games right now right after this 2d section that is not my favorite we go in and we fight the dominatrix probably one of my favorite bosses personally yeah she's pretty hot she looks like a <laughs> warhammer character or something like 40,000 esque she's super hot all dressed up in some red military type <clears throat> military type clothing so it's pretty dope you were digging it yeah yeah i like her because there is a lot of strategy with her when she whips these guys they become like maximum simps like they <laughs> they fucking attack you and alpha simp yeah they alpha <laughs> simps they become alpha simps and what ends up happening is when she whips them their hair turns blonde and they have more health and they're more powerful so what you want to do is either kill them before she can whip them or you can keep her away and i also really liked her because you can hit her up in the air farther than most other characters so you can sit there and juggle her against the wall as much as you want i thought that was a lot of fun yeah it was pretty a smart way of handling these characters you'll find that these enemies do have weight just as your own character does you can punch some of them up really high other ones won't even budge like the fat guys they just won't budge yeah the fat guy you just sit there and hit him and he'll kind of flinch but he doesn't bounce as high as for example this dominatrix character and i think that's a lot of fun after this we go to the pier which not a whole lot happens on the pier. I mean, it's just kind of a filler one. So we get introduced to a character from the previous games at the end of this level, and that's Adam. And that's kind of what this felt like it was for, you know, this level was introducing him, but also another character that we'll fight, I think one or two more times after this. And that's Estelle. That's actually a pretty quick level, kind of a fun interaction between Adam and his daughter, Cherry. And that's actually the last time you see him. Right after that, we go to the sewers. My instant reaction to this one, was this looks really fucking cool. I love that green color. Yeah, Toxic Sludge. It's just popping off the screen, and it looks amazing. And I feel like it, any retro game enthusiast can tell you, if there's a sewer level in your game, it's probably a good game. And that's just kind of how this one is. I think that this sewer level is pretty fun. Oh yeah, and the sewer is probably green and toxic, and you're not even sure what it is. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a criticism with this level, and it kind of continues on throughout the game. In the first level, you fight this robot guy. He's your mid-boss. You fight him again in this level and I kind of could have used a different guy personally. He's reused. Uh, he's really just recolored and if they're going to do that with a lot of these characters I'd like a little more background but it's not necessary for this game. It was annoying to encounter him again and again and he's literally the same. The only thing that I think is really different about him too is that he does this like jump move where he comes back down and you have to kind of hide and then the other thing is if you throw weapons at him he can catch him. I, I don't know. He just didn't seem interesting enough to see him three or four times on the first encounter he's kind of scary kind of you know he comes out of nowhere but after that you expect him yeah exactly right after that though this level does something that i did not expect you climb up a ladder and you're in this bar and this bar fight is pretty fun i think you go into the biker bar and we're introduced to more enemies in this one particularly a really annoying enemy <laughs> i just have them written down as larger ladies <laughs> 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 the larger ladies? Yeah, they're kind of larger ladies, and they only wear glasses. I don't know. They're like LaFondas. I don't, I don't know. That's like, like all of them must have that name. No, they've got real names. Their names are like Sugar or Candy. And I just imagine a larger lady that would call people Sugar or Candy. <laughs> and that's what they look like. Yeah. And they're tough. Yeah. They're actually really tough I, enemies. I don't like them. No. They're probably the worst part of the game. They get reused a lot too. They do this attack where they just rush you. They like headbutt you <laughs> with their yeah. helmet on. Yeah, they're like fondue hair or something <laughs> yeah, and i fucking hate that attack because they have so many frames of invincibility there and if you get in their way you're just gone specifically if there's like five or six of these bowling ball women <laughs> they are gonna combo you and just keep juggling you yeah but if you get past them you're rewarded with a pretty cool boss <laughs> 
Tell me more about the next boss. So you see him and he's like, he's on this motorcycle, this real hog. And he looks like fucking Freddie Mercury. He's pretty cool. I would say that he doesn't do anything too special. A lot of different like kick moves. You just gotta get out of the way again. And you gotta use a lot of aerial moves if I remember correctly to just knock him off balance and you can hit him as much as you want. He's not my favorite boss, but he is pretty good still. He's actually a pretty easy boss too. There's some motorcycles in the background. And just like the other boxes that you'd punch, the boxes in this scene are motorcycles. So you just punch those for the health and there's a lot of them. And he's not a tough boss. You get him up against the wall and we just juggled him. I think we ended up with like 30 consecutive hits and he died so fast. I did like that little touch because you know that those fucking LaFonda ladies are the ones that parked him there and you can take your revenge out on their bikes. Yeah. I kind of like that. <laughs> Tip their bikes over. After we fight Barbin, that's Freddie Mercury's new name, we haul off on one of those motorcycles. At least that's what I took from the cutscene. And we go straight to Chinatown. Oh, yeah. Okay, Chinatown was one of my favorites with the aesthetics. Yes. It's fucking cool. It's like Karate Kid stuff. And you start out in what you would think of as a Chinatown, sort of a narrow, like, compact street with lots of shops. And it's not long before you approach a dojo. And then you go inside. And these are, like, beautiful temples. Lots of really beautiful scenery around and a plethora of enemies they throw a lot of the same enemy type at you and that's just how the fights go almost all of them have weapons there is a new type of enemy that really fucking switches up the gameplay he is one of my favorite enemies i don't know how you feel but he counters you yeah yeah while we were playing it you compared it to like a smash ultimate counter like something that ike might have where he has this open stance he sort of brings his arms open and you don't know this but you go to punch him in that open stance that's a fucking trick like this dude's a master <laughs> and he gets you and he just hauls on you. I really like this guy because he changes the game so much where it usually is like focused on you getting combos and just wailing on these people. This one says, hold on, do you really want to do that? You know, you better think about your next move. And I thought that that was really awesome. Especially with the engagement they give you, it's sort of like a one-on-one -on -one and it feels like a fight at this point. Mm -hmm. Another part in this level that I really enjoyed was these dojos where there's just enemies flooding from both sides. I like this part because it actually forced you to use the different weapons that they have at your disposal to keep every enemy away from you. A lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. And working through this level, you get through more pretty dojos. I cannot stress this enough. The art in this game is beautiful. I wish a lot of games looked like this because Just, it's so pretty to look at. But we end up in a courtyard. A lot of fights actually kind of take place in a courtyard. But we end up in a really beautiful zen looking courtyard. And we end up fighting an enemy in there named Shiva. And... Uh, uh, he's kind of he changes it up too. I mean his fight ends up having you focus on many versions of him What did you take from this change and sort of a story? Shiva was kind of fun because the other duplicates of him you could not hurt So you just had to like really keep an eye on both of them because I think he gets up to two You have to keep an eye on them and just make sure that you're not close to them Just keep wailing on Shiva So you kind of just really have to pay attention to what he's doing. I thought it was a really good fight It really fit thematically and and Shiva, you know, you kind of expect him to be quite a wise guy. And he's not, he's a bad guy, but he's not like awful, you know. And he actually ends up revealing something about the story and what's kind of going on. And why this whole syndicate, right, who we're fighting against, why they're a problem. Shiva ends up telling us at the end of this fight that Mr. X and his twins, they're trying to take over the whole city, really, with their mind-controlling music, sort of Splatoon style. But with that detail, that sort of adds a little bit more to the story. And it starts to make a little more sense of uh, the play places you're going to tracking these people down. Yeah, it's so funny that you brought up Splatoon because as I was playing it, I was thinking of the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie, <laughs> which <laughs> they do that in that as well. Damn, dude, are there any original ideas out there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, right after that, we jump off of the building and onto a moving train, and that's where the rest of this fight happens. I think the main difference between this and the other levels is that this train, it has like signs and stuff that you have to jump over as it's moving. Yeah, if you've played a fighting game or a platformer on a moving train, it's kind of a trope. There's just shit on, that passes over a moving train, so you, you gotta jump over it. Uh, meanwhile, you're fighting off cops on top of the train. It's a pretty short-lived level. You just move your way across the top of this train, and there's not too much to look at besides the, the backdrop behind you, which is a skylight you know, just the city. I think it's an okay level. I mean, it changes what you're doing enough, but there's not really much to talk about. No, it's pretty short-lived, actually. But it ends in a pretty significant way. This one ends with 
Mr. X actually revealing himself to us. And at the end of the boss level, we're fighting the commissioner. We're fighting that female cop that we just fought in, uh, I believe, level three. And this fight ends with Mr. X sort of showing up in a helicopter. And he straight up shoots a bazooka at the civilian train. I think right there, when he shoots the bazooka, Mr. X actually interjects and says something like, you can't tell me what to do. Which is like the most hardcore, like Shadow the Hedgehog type shit I've ever seen in the video. Yeah. I don't know, dude. He's just kind of like stereotypical, like mean anime guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody, nobody can tell this guy what to no, do. No, not even the police apparently. He doesn't go to bed when he's supposed to. He doesn't do any of that shit. <laughs> he's Mr. X, dude. So this train's derailed. We end up in an art gallery and now we're going to make our way through there. The art gallery was actually a pretty nice area. I enjoyed the enemies that we got and I really enjoyed the art that was hanging on the walls. What did you think of this one? I really like the enemies. They're like these punk girls that kind of throw things at you. I like them because you can catch whatever they're throwing and just throw it right back at them. Or if you get close enough, you can just juggle them because they fly up really high. Probably higher than the dominatrix type enemies. And I thought they were a lot of fun. I also really enjoyed this kind of backdrop of these different art exhibits, which you can tell that the artists just had a lot of fun with this. Some of it kind of feels like they were taking shots at modern art. Like at the very first frame of this level, you see everybody sitting around this like golden chicken. Yeah, yeah. Later in that level, it's revealed that there's like a shitload of golden chickens in the back room. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Mass produced golden chicken. Yeah, so there's just a bunch of thugs worshipping this chicken art. But you go through that and there's some like, I'm going to call it anti-establishment type art because there's like a dollar sign, but with the like cross through it instead of like, you know, the line going straight through the S. It's like going at a slant. And there's just some uh, brass knuckles on the wall too. It says punch or something like that on the brass knuckles. So I kind of felt some anti-establishment stuff and there's punks hanging out in this museum too. Kind of Banksy, don't you think? Yeah, that's Banksy-esque type art. I thought it was pretty cool. One of my favorite things that I saw in this level is there's like this big face on the wall with like bullets coming out of its mouth. That shit's cool. Yeah, like the different themed rooms too. It just really is like moving through an exhibit. There's like a pink room and then a white room and it's cool. Even though the environment is really cool, I didn't like the last boss in this one. It's like these two twins. They're the snake girl from the first level. I kind of feel like there wasn't enough room to fight two of these guys. Like you said, the snake girl, their ability is almost the same where they're throwing something at you. So the snake girl does like this electrical shock. And these guys do moves that are similar to the punks that you were fighting. So they're not like Molotov cocktails. They look like potions or something. So one throws a potion of fire and the other one throws a potion of like a toxic sludge. And for two players, it felt like the floor space was pretty limited. I couldn't imagine for four players what that would be like. It'd be insane. So the next one is the Y tower in the white tower you start off in like this kind of bathhouse looking place where there's a bunch of these big fat gangster mob looking people in the background i thought that was really cool yeah personally. it was a really pretty environment yeah and then right after that you fight more of these counter characters except this time they're in a red kimono and they really will fuck you up if you screw up that counter you're dead they really don't relent like more so than other characters when these ones hit you it's several attacks that follow you cannot counter those yeah, it's a huge chip off of your health. Right after that, we get into this part where this elevator opens and we're introduced to these characters named Gold and Silver that have these guns. And I don't know what to think of these characters because while they do like have a really long range, they hardly ever hit me. I feel like they're just kind of filler. Yeah, they're extremely squishy. Like you just get up there, punch them a couple times and they die. Their only real attack is their ranged bullets. But right after that, you get into the elevator and this is one of the coolest parts in the whole game they end up using these big fat guys in the elevator again the ones with the guns but this time you're throwing them around so they feel less weighty but there's definitely some weight to them and what they're doing is really interesting plus you can break that window <laughs> and you can knock tons of people out of it and it feels really cool and super satisfying. Yeah, it's the environment here on the Y Tower level that is really selling it for me. Like when you enter that sauna, I don't know if you notice this, but when you're moving and you stop, you actually slide across the floor. Oh. Yeah, it made that floor feel really wet. I did it a couple times on purpose just because it was really cool to see that happen. And then when you get into that elevator, you're cracking the wall, the glass wall, when you're throwing enemies against it, it opens up and now you're interacting with the fight scene as you move up the elevator not only is that part just really cool to look at but the music hypes you up oh yeah 
it's amazing it's like this synth score i love that part it's really great it just really hypes you up for the next boss fight this boss fight is a good finale for this level you've escalated this building now you're at the top floor it's the penthouse and you have a big fight ahead of you against a character called max and a, an audience full of people that looks like the people you've been fighting and some of our main villains in the game oh man orange almost had like a heart attack during this fight oh yeah this one was tough man because i think we got in there and it wasn't too long that they'd taken your final stock down you just happened to have the aggro and so that one got my palm sweaty i'm really glad i brought my own controller because it was soaked it was disgusting guys you don't <laughs> want to see yeah. this thing it smelled bad it tasted good though <laughs> <laughs> this next one is the building ceilings because we got to stop this concert that Mr. and Mrs. X, Mr. and Miss, sorry. We got to stop this concert that Mr. and Miss X are trying to put on to brainwash the citizens of Oakwood City. That's the name of the city. Yeah, it's kind of a shitty town name, like <laughs> Oakwood. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you guys could have done better than that, but you know, whatever. So this is one of those levels that I felt kind of was just filler again. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. I like rooftop levels. I've always kind of like had this rooftop fantasy for things. Like I've always liked rooftop parties and like the idea of rooftop concerts and stuff. So this level was cool to me. It was really kind of trashy up on the roof. There's a lot of threat for falling down and uh, you're kind of moving closer. And as you get closer, it seems like the music is getting louder and there's more speakers and wiring for you to walk over. And the finale for this level is actually pretty cool. The boss was fun. Yeah. Before we get into that, though, there was one part that I did like, which had this wrecking ball and you were able to just kind of do crowd control with this wrecking ball, punching it and hitting people from across this bridge. I thought that that was pretty fun. Now, the boss looks really cool. The boss is cool. He's a DJ. I can't remember his full name. It's kind of strange, but he's this DJ and it seems like he's kind of the reason why people are losing their minds. And so you're here to stop this concert and we beat the shit out of the DJ. He's actually a pretty easy boss. At least maybe we were just in the flow of the game at this point, but we were able to down him pretty fast the trick with him is just kind of staying off the ground he has these like rings that hit the ground and then they go into this kind of serpentine motion that you have to dodge that's the main thing with him and i don't know he looked really cool but he was not my favorite boss yeah after that the floor opens up and we go into this hangar yeah once again we're on an elevator yeah a lot of elevators in this one yeah i guess people just fight in elevators constantly that's what i thought i mean i brought it up while we were playing i'd seen this these types of levels before and i've never seen one of these hangers in my life I, I didn't know they existed until i saw one in half-life 2 and then i'd seen one in grand theft auto and then i'd seen one in this game <laughs> so a destiny 2 it's just this is just a place where you fight people if i'm ever on one of these hanger elevators i just need to start punching people apparently yeah kick them off the edge that's what you gotta do you gotta get them before they get you right mm -hmm. as soon as we get off this hanger we are like kind of bombarded with this group of police that have shields and right behind them is punk characters sort of like catapulting these different chemicals and molotovs at you. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked that. And by this point in the game, those officers with the shields, they don't feel so threatening anymore. They're actually pretty tame and presented with like four at a time. So you're able to down them pretty quickly at this point in the game. And it's those punks that you got to worry about. Yeah, I liked it because I think with you and me playing, we did it in like a strategic way where one character was Blaze and we jumped over those cops and we hit the punk while the other character was Floyd and they hit the cops. It worked out really well and it was one of the times in this game where I was just like, this is really fun to work with your friend on how to tackle this situation. Right after that, you get onto this plane and there's a fight on the plane and you fight Mr. X and he has like a Uzi, I want to say, and like this rocket that he's shooting at you in his own plane. Yeah, the same bazooka he used to blow up a whole train. What did you think of that fight? I don't like fighting him. It's not that he's cheap or anything. I've dealt with cheap fights so far in this game. It was that he was, he just isn't really cool. No. <laughs> He's not cool. You just have to dodge a lot of things. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just lame. Yeah. I got into a lot of invincibility frames on this one. And again, I was having really close fights with this guy. He was tough. Right after that, we crash land onto this island. Thankfully, we crash landed onto Y Island. Really cool. I'm happy that that happened for them. Yeah. You wouldn't believe who lives there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Epstein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of this level? So this level, I liked the introduction to. You crash landed. Miraculously, you survived. And the plane is, is huge, apparently. This plane looks like a building fell over. And you're moving through the rubble. And again, we have to fight LaFonda characters. These aren't fun. This is a hard level, okay? Like, this level is going to end it. <laughs> so... <laughs> You need to fucking fight past these characters and not get hit because you will find out at the end of this level, it's hard. Yeah, these women, I don't know what their names are. LaFonda. Candy, Sugar. Candy, Sugar. I did not like them. I did not like fighting them because this time we have like ramped up versions of them that do not die. You hit them like a billion times and they just keep headbutting you and it's super difficult. And that's only the first part of this level. The next part is the castle, which I enjoyed the majority of. Specifically, the first floor of it is pretty fun and it makes sense. There's some shanty chandeliers that you can cut and they fall and they hit people and I think that's fun but then you get onto the second floor yeah the second floor is a minecraft server hallway <laughs> with, with. Yeah. And so you're basically tripping over some power cables, but you do have to fight RoboCop in the, on the <laughs> second floor. And so these RoboCops, they come out and they, they start punching and kicking you. They're not too hard. You've already dealt with them before. In other places, I didn't have too hard of a time. It was the room after that that I had major criticisms for, and I'm happy that it happened at the end, but I wish it never happened at all. No, what it is is that you fight against these four big guys, right? And... <laughs> That usually would not be an issue. The problem is, is that there is a wrecking ball in the middle of the room and the room is tiny. So it's almost impossible not to get hit or to perform good in this room. It just felt like this wasn't the natural progression. Like you just fought these cops in a kind of badass server room hallway thing. And then we go into that room and it's just a big wrecking ball in the middle of the hallway. And yeah, like you said, there's no room. I don't know how this would work with four players, especially if you had friendly fire on, but I didn't have fun in this one i like the wrecking ball on the other level but i didn't like it here no it's impossible right after that we finally get to miss y and her fight is pretty good actually i liked it she has this sword and she does some counters she also can just fly across the screen you gotta get the fuck out of the way i thought it was pretty fun it was good yeah it was okay her fighting style is a little bit similar to the commissar fight where he's gonna be going diagonal across the screen and she gives you a pretty good warning too she puts up her sword it lights up blue and then she dashes across across the screen. I had trouble hitting her. I kind of made sense. Her character is actually pretty thin. I mean, every female character in this game has legs for days, but like her whole thing is pretty thin. And so she moves around pretty quickly and it was hard to get her sometimes. I was punching around her all the time. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult, but once you got her, she was pretty easy to juggle. And eventually you get her to the point where she surrenders and she backs out into like the backyard of this castle. Yep, another courtyard. So now we got to go behind the castle and it's Mrs. Y, Mr. Y, or X. And yeah, they're brother and sister. They're brother and sister. And now it's the both of them. And so far, they've actually been some of the harder fights. The thing with Miss Y is she's got a lot of health. So it's not that her attacks are that strong until this fight, but she just takes forever to kill. And they introduce a mech somewhere around like the, I think, 20% range of health missing on Mr. X. This mech looks really cool. I'm not going to take that away from the game, but this is my main criticism of the game. Unfortunately, I don't think the game ends very well with this fight because it feels incredibly cheap. I do not know where this mech is going to hit at. Just like with a lot of these different beat-em-up games, it's hard to tell like the depth of what you're looking at, and I couldn't ever really tell if he was going to hit in the foreground or the background or in the middle of the stage, and it was really difficult for me to dodge this mechs attacks and I didn't like that. Yeah I, I think if you're a pro at these kind of games you must have a trained eye for like noticing when they're gonna do a certain move and just the correct hand eye coordination for preparing for it but this was like the first time I've played a game like this and this boss fight was incredibly hard and it was the same problems and until I found just by accident I found that the top of the screen is where you want to hang out if you're gonna take care of 
the spider mech that he's in. I don't even know if that was on purpose, though. I don't know either, but it, it seemed to work out. And actually, a few times I'd noticed that just for a fraction of a second, I'd clip through the arm of the spider. I'd see my character moving, you know, the 2D plane through the arm. I do think that it was kind of fun because once again, this was one of those opportunities where the game had you coordinating with the people that you're playing with and deciding on who's going to take out what. We ended the game with me taking out Miss Y and you attacking the robot and eventually we were able to defeat them and it did feel very fulfilling because the fight is really cheap and really hard, but it did kind of sour the overall impression of the game. We spent five or six attempts really knocking this one out and it was tough like it's frustrating but i i don't really feel like it soured the game for me i feel like that was probably a good payoff and it really made me work for it i was just really frustrated with the fight because it just seemed like there was really nothing i could do besides what i thought was a cheese i was just jumping and pressing the kick button or the punch button so i knew that that was an invincibility frame and so i was just spamming that to get as many frames and, and just hoping that that would save me i know i couldn't do that on a harder difficulty so I don't really feel like I deserve the win, but we did do it a lot. You know, that's just where I feel like the finale was okay. If you're really good at this game, you probably just power right through it, no problem. I think the one thing that they could have done to fix that is just have like a shadow or something on the ground that tells you this is where it's going to fall at so that you would be able to dodge where the leg was going to hit. I think that that could have fixed a lot. While playing this game, I really did like the old school nature of it. And I liked how difficult it was. I also liked how lives meant something again most games it doesn't mean anything but in this it really did now with that said there were certain things that i thought that they could have fixed one thing is i actually think it would be cool to see a beat em up like this with a dodge button similar to like a dark souls game or i don't know like enter the gungeon where you're rolling out of the way i don't know what would you think i think that would fit pretty well i just feel like that would probably offend the more hardcore fans of this game i know that they did a really good job of sticking true to the originals where you punch in a quarter so you can have your next attempt and they want you to keep playing on these arcade games and so they did a good job at keeping that same style just one more try just one more quarter and punishing you for failing so i don't know if they would see that as like a you know kind of an escape or a cop out just for easy mode i'm curious to hear what fans of either the genre or the series have to say about something like a dodge mechanic or a roll if streets of rage 5 comes out next week i would probably buy it just to see what it's like i'm really curious to to see what this franchise has in store for us next. I know that it's been years, years and years and years since Streets of Rage 3, so I don't know if we're going to see that anytime soon. But if there is anything like that coming in the way, I'm excited to see what this team pulls off and if they would add anything to the beat em up genre. We're seeing kind of this resurgence in it, and I think that's a good thing. I'm happy that we have another genre coming out. It's so difficult to play games right now because it just feels like shooter after shooter or open world after open world and i am happy to see this beat-em-up kind of genre again for terms of a story i like this too a non-serious story that doesn't have too much thought into it it just has a lot of fun and that was what kept me going a lot of it was i want to see the next level i want to see the next stage or environment that they're going to put me through and the only thing i think i could ask for is maybe more enemy types personally i would like to see a dodge mechanic i know that i said fans of the game might not i'm new <laughs> so i'd kind of like an easy mode <laughs> i mean i think that they could do it in a way so that it doesn't dilute the overall difficulty but it would still be more fun maybe a block block just some kind of change i think they did so well with this resurgence and this recreation of old games i think that they could continue forward with some more changes and not have to suffer for it so much they really sold this one it's good yeah this is fucking amazing this might be one of my favorite games that i've played on the show so far like i said orange told me he actually didn't really like beat-em-ups for a while but it seems like you really enjoyed this one yeah for sure this one this one might have gotten me into beat-em-ups so of course it 
it set the bar incredibly high. So maybe I'll, I'll just keep my eyes open if there's games out there that can top it or just about reach it. I'll give them a try. I'm turned on to this genre now. Do you think you'll play it again? Yeah, definitely. My brother is interested. So it's about time that I fire it up at home and get some family in on it and some more friends. Same. I think I'm going to be playing this for a while. Family, friends. It's incredibly fun, even though it's a little difficult. There's a lot of laughing when you're playing this game. There's a little bit of frustration, but that's all a part of the game. And I really enjoyed this. Go check it out. This was COG signing out. See you.